want to talk about one of the fundamental rules of engineering drawings. So this comes from ASME Y145 2018, but this rule exists in 2009 and 1994. So this is rule P. So it's alphabetical for whatever reason. I have another video where I go through all of the rules and give a brief description of each, but I'll go into a lot of detail about this one. So it goes like this. This is the verbatim reading. So dimensions and tolerances apply only at the drawing level where they are specified. A dimension specified for a given feature on one level of drawing, e.g. a detail drawing, is not mandatory for that feature at any other level, e.g. an assembly drawing. So from my experience looking at drawings, people either don't know this rule exists or don't know what it means. So let me try to give you some examples of how I've commonly seen drawings made that just totally misuse this rule or just ignore it completely. So on the screen, I have a, a part, it's a block with a hole in it. It's the most popular type of example for explaining GDMT. Luckily, we don't have to talk about any of the symbology. It's enough to know that the part is fully dimensioned, fully defined on this drawing. So say we want to make an assembly with this part. We're going to take two of them and we're going to weld them into an L shape. For these two parts, we're going to just weld them together. One fillet weld, easy peasy. So on the screen now is what is common to see out there in industry. You've got an assembly drawing. You got two parts. We've got a parts list that indicates that you're just using the same part twice. Easy enough. So you only need one detail drawing. So when you send this off to get made, whether it's in your company or send it somewhere else, you'll have a drawing package with that detail drawing, with the fully defined part, and this assembly drawing that shows both parts, how they're assembled, and what kind of welding you're gonna use. So in this case, I just say typical fillet weld. We're not here to talk about welding symbols. So this is enough for most people to make the part. They're gonna stick it together and weld it. Enough said, right? Well, that rule I just said says that the detail features do not apply at the assembly level. Well, what does that mean? That means that the welder could put way too much heat into this part and warp it. Okay, so if the part is warped, say that L shape is like this or like this or like this, whatever, the flatness and profile tolerances on the detail drawing don't apply at the assembly drawing, right? So if it mattered that it was flat or there was a profile of 10 thou on the uh, opposite surface of datum A, that's not going to be available at the assembly level. So that probably matters, right? You wouldn't have put it on the detail drawing if it didn't matter for assembly. So what you'll also see is the assembly drawing with some dimensions on it. Right? So maybe you want to put that flatness on the assembly drawing. Right? Well, when you do that, why would you have the flatness on the detail drawing? Right? If it applies an assembly, don't put it on the detail drawing. You're essentially just detailing the same thing twice. Right? So with the answer to this, how you avoid having problems like this happen at the assembly level is by making what is known as a weldment drawing. So you put, you don't even have a detailed drawing of the block. You just detail everything on the assembly drawing. So you're putting the final requirements of the part on the assembly drawing. So the welder or the machinist or a welder machinist, whoever's making this part, knows everything they need to know about that assembly. So they can put it together and it'll meet the final requirements in a way it would not if you had a detail drawing and an assembly drawing separately. Another thing, you might say, okay, what about rule number one, right? The part needs to be flat at the assembly level, okay? Isn't there something with rule number one that protects it from being, you know, like an S shape? Well, rule number one requires that there be a dimension. So that assembly drawing doesn't have any dimensions on it. 
So if there's no dimensions, we can't have a tolerance. So you see what I'm saying? Rule number one won't help you. The welder could destroy this part if he wanted to, as long as there's a fillet weld there and they're arranged like it looks like on the drawing, any number of things could happen at assembly. So that's a fundamental rule P, just food for thought. Uh, watch out for it out there in industry. Assembly drawings can get really complicated, especially weldment drawings, but they're there for a reason to protect the designer's intent. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it uh, helpful.